Now we're going to practice using a TV diagram to evaluate the phase and state of a substance. So let's put up our template TV diagram. And let's say that we're given three distinct isobars. Remember, isobars are lines of constant pressure. A line of constant temperature on a TV diagram would be a horizontal line. A line of constant specific volume would be a vertical line. But isobars have these interesting curves. So here's one that intercepts the critical point at the top of the vapor dome. Here's one that passes through the middle of the vapor dome, and then here's one that passes through the bottom of the vapor dome. A few things to note. One is that if you look at the pressure values, clearly even spacing of isobars does not correspond to even spacing of values. You should think of these diagrams more as being schematics. Now, the other thing is that although we have units on our axes, we don't actually have any values. So let me put some of those in so that we know about things like the saturation states and the temperatures within the vapor dome. So first I'll label the temperature axis. And all I want to do is have these dashed lines represent the temperatures at which the substance is moving through the vapor dome, or in the case of the critical point, is at the top of the vapor dome. So now those numbers on the left tell you those temperatures. We're also going to do that with specific volumes. So let's go through. And the reason I chose those four values is that I wanted to make sure that I got every saturation state. So every time that one of the isobars hits the left side or the right side of the vapor dome, I wanted to make sure I knew that value. I'm not too interested in the critical point at the top or else we could label that too. So now we're going to use this TV diagram to answer two different kind of complicated looking questions. The first one is that gas in a piston at an initial pressure of 18 bar is compressed at constant pressure until it reaches a specific volume of 0.20 cubic meters per kilogram. It is then cooled at constant volume until it reaches a pressure of 5 bar. What are its final temperature and phase? Part of the difficulty in answering questions like this is just parsing out what they're asking in words, trying to relate that to what's in the diagram. So let's do what we can. Our first step should be to label the initial state. So it's gas, first of all, that immediately tells us that it's to the right of the vapor dome on a TV plot. All right, that helps. It's at an initial pressure of 18 bar. Well, we have a 20 bar line and a 5 bar line. We don't have an 18 bar line. But you'll also notice that all isobars sort of behave the same way if they're passing through the vapor dome. They should slope up and to the right away from the vapor dome to its right. So in that case, we can imagine that an 18 bar line probably looks a lot like a 20 bar line, but is just located a little bit lower on the plot at slightly lower temperatures. Okay, well that gives us a sense of what we want this thing to do. Now what about compression? Does compression move to the left or the right on this plot? Well remember, the horizontal axis is specific volume. This is a closed system since it's inside a piston. If you increase the specific volume, that means that you're actually expanding the piston. In this case it says we're compressing the piston, so we must be moving to the left on a TV diagram. So we know that we have to move along an isobar that's approximately parallel to the 20 bar line, just a little lower, and we know that we're compressing, so we have to move sort of down and to the left when we move on that isobar. So let's plop down a sample state, and now we'll evolve it at constant pressure going down and to the left. Now, it should only go until it reaches a specific volume of 0.2 cubic meters per kilogram, we don't know exactly where that value is going to be, but we do know that it's bounded by the two values of specific volume that we are given on the right side of the vapor dome. Where we've put it is good enough. The next step is to cool at a constant volume until our system reaches a pressure of 5 bar. Well, let's think about this. Cooling at constant volume, we only have specific volume and temperature. Cooling, you can imagine, will take it lower on the temperature end. For specific volume for a piston, Specific volume and constant volume are proportional to one another, so if you cool something but keep it at constant volume, that means that it should move vertically downward on a TV plot. It has to have the same value of the specific volume, but you can change its temperature when you cool it. So we should be moving vertically downward until we hit a pressure of 5 bar. Well, how do we know where to stop? Fortunately, we have an isobar corresponding to the pressure value of 5 bar. So we'll move straight down until we hit that isobar. Moving down, and we're crossing into the vapor dome, and now we hit that isobar corresponding to a pressure of 5 bar. Now we have enough information to answer what are the final temperature and phase of this system. 
For the temperature, well, we can just read it off. Where are we on the TV diagram? We look to the left, the temperature value that we've achieved is 4.1 Celsius. And we know that because we know that the 5 bar isobar should always have constant temperature within the vapor dome. So wherever we ended up hitting that isobar, as long as we did so within the vapor dome, we should have the same temperature corresponding to that value on the left. Okay, so the final temperature is 4.1 degrees C. What about the phase? Well, it depends on how precisely you want to answer this. We definitely know that we have a mixture of liquid and vapor because we are inside the vapor dome. Anytime you're not at one of the boundaries of the vapor dome, but actually interior to it, you know that you have some liquid vapor mixture. Eventually, we'll figure out how to compute the relative proportionalities of liquid and vapor, but for now, it's enough to say that it's a liquid vapor mixture. I want to get a little more practice using this particular TV diagram, but in trying to answer a different question. So let's get rid of the question and its answer that we currently have up there and replace it with this. A mixture of liquid and gas at an initial pressure of 5 bar in a container of fixed size is heated to a pressure of 18 bar, at which point it becomes entirely liquid. What is the approximate specific volume of this liquid? The key detail in the statement of this problem is the container of fixed size. So if it's fixed size and presumably sealed, that's all we really know how to deal with at the moment, that tells us that it's a constant specific volume, right? Because the mass is fixed in a sealed container, that means that volume and specific volume are directly proportional to one another. If you don't change the size of the container, you're not changing the volume, you're not changing the specific volume. Okay, so that means we start out with an initial pressure of 5 bar, and we know it's a mixture of liquid and gas, so we're somewhere in the vapor dome. All that really tells us is that we're somewhere along that isobar at the bottom, the 5 bar isobar, and within the vapor dome. But we also know that when we heat to a pressure of 18 bar, then suddenly our system is entirely liquid. What does it mean when something becomes entirely liquid? Well, at the moment that it becomes entirely liquid, we know that we're on the left side, the left boundary specifically, of the vapor dome. In other words, we have to be somewhere over here in the final state. Just to walk back through, we know that the final pressure is 18 bar, so it has to be located somewhere between the 20 bar line and the 5 bar line, probably closer to the 20. But we also know that we have to be on the left side of the vapor dome at that boundary. That gives us that yellow line. Well, the nice thing is that yellow line corresponds to a very narrow range of values of specific volume. If you look down at the specific volume axis, the minimum it could be is 0.0016, the maximum is 0.0018, both in cubic meters per kilogram. That's a good enough answer for what is the approximate specific volume of this liquid. We don't know which of those values, or whether there's an intermediate value for the particular case that we chose, but we can automatically conclude that it has to be in that range. So the approximate specific volume of this liquid must be between 0.0016 and 0.0018 cubic meters per kilogram. As we'll see eventually, the property, namely that lines get really steep on the left side of the vapor dome when they become liquid, will eventually help us to estimate specific volumes even for cases where we don't have the exact data that we need.